Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Gerard from Gars Bar, and today we're going to be comparing two ways to build interactive web apps with Python. So basically what that means is we're going to have something we can interact with in the browser and we can uh, communicate to a web server. Um, so these two methods are going to be bottle and HTMX, which is honestly a combination that I don't know if anyone else is using. This is not a debate that people really have. Um, and we're going to compa be comparing that to Streamlit. Uh, so Streamlit kind of totes itself as the fastest way to build data science apps, and we're going to see if that really checks out. So if we look at like the minimal bottle app, um, all we really need is to run a server. Um, we can give it a host and a port, um, and then we can add routes to that server. Uh, so those are the URLs that we hit. Uh, this one, when we uh, make a GET request to this slash route, it'll return the text string hello world. Um, so if we were to try this out in a code editor, we could put this in VS Code. We could spin up python min bottle.py, and it tells us listening on localhost. And we could do something like uh, use the requests library uh, to get that HTTP localhost address. And up at the top here, we see a log in our bottle server, and that tells us someone made a GET request. Um, and down here, we see that response 200. If we want to actually see the body of that response, um, we can do dot .text uh, to get that out. So what would this look like uh, with Streamlit? Or actually, what would this look like in a browser? So if we look, look, look at this in a browser, all we get is this text, hello world. Very, very plain. If we were to compare this to Streamlit, our minimal hello world is just importing Streamlit and then using this write command uh, to write some text. So we can't run Streamlit with just the raw Python command. Uh, we have to use Streamlit run, and then we'll do min Streamlit. Now in this case, we actually don't want to make any requests um, because we're not serving up an API. Um, in this case, we're just going to go to the browser and we see localhost 8501. That's the port that Streamlit chooses. And we have this um, kind of system setting dark theme. Um, it'll be light if your system settings like that. And we have hello world printed out. We also have some other goodies, like this hamburger menu, and we can even switch that uh, light theme uh, explicitly, user customization, kind of we have that out of the box. So kind of where does that land us for interactivity? We haven't even gotten a web page with Bottle yet. So I consider Bottle kind of the simplest way to spin up a web server with Python, but it's definitely not the easiest. Um, so. I say simple because it doesn't have any dependencies. It's one file, self-contained, um, and it's not the easiest because there are some weird things like Flask or this um, request object kind of, where does that come from? It's just kind of sitting in the global scope. But anyway, if we have this minimal bottle plus HTMX app, we have our slash route, and this is gonna return a static file in index.html. If you're familiar with web servers, hopefully that makes some sense to you. And just to be explicit here, we're gonna add a route for the HTMX JavaScript. It's also another library that has no dependencies. It's contained in a single file. Um, if you're going to deploy it to production, gzip it or something. Um, but this is just going to serve the raw JavaScript file. Additionally, we have a route at slash fun. And this is going to respond to get requests. And this one, we return a string. But in the string, we're not just writing hello world. We're writing some HTML. Uh, so sending HTML over the wire is definitely a controversial topic. Um, but in this case, we're going to be trying it out with HTMX because they have all of the AJAX um, responses and requests behind the scenes uh, to kind of make the interactivity work. So if we look closely in this text area, there's some things that you've probably never seen before if you don't use HTMX. We have this HX post, we have this HX target, and this HX swap. So what this is going to do is whenever this text area changes, um, so if you're familiar with Streamlit, maybe you get that interactivity bit. Um, whenever that happens, we're going to make a post request to slash fun, and we're going to swap the inner HTML of our fun outputs with whatever we get back. So that means on our web server, we want to return some HTML from this post request. And that's what we're going to do down here. So this route has response to slash fun, but with a post request, um, and on this case, we're going to use that global request object, go into the forms, and get out our fun input. Um, so this depends on our kind of name and ID that we give to the text area. There's more to HTMX, um, 
than I have experience with can do stuff like full HTML forms and things. Anyway, we get out this string value. If there's kind of no value, then we'll return a blank string. And then if there is kind of anything in that text area, we're going to return um, a template containing kind of the length of the thing we passed in, and then we're going to reverse the string. And so just to show that in our VS Code editor, we have it open on the left, and we can run Python whiskey.py. So now we do want to go to our local host, and we have to force our cache to clear, because uh, browsers want you to not send more requests. And cool, we get this button that says, do something fun. And if we click that button, then we get a text area. And it says, type some nonsense, then tab or click away. So if we type some nonsense, and then click away, then we get a response. And this is all interactive. Um, if we can change things, we can delete stuff, and it'll immediately send a request to the server. It sends this post request. It sends the text that uh, we put in the text area. And then it responds with this bit of HTML uh, to put it back on the page. So right now, we're at sitting at about 30 lines of Python. Um, and if you don't like putting HTML in Python scripts, I'm totally with you. Uh, you could put this in a template file or something. It's uh, shown here for simplicity. And then we also need this index HTML. So if you're not familiar with web servers, then HTML might be a little bit intimidating. Um, this honestly is kind of a bare bones HTML page. And if I looked at this as a beginner, I wouldn't know what an XUA compatible is. I wouldn't know what an IE edge is, um, things like that. Um, so yeah, the amount of files that we need, basically we need our HTMX JavaScript, we need our index HTML, and we need our WYSIWYG. If we want to do this in Streamlit, we need about 12 lines of code. Um, so instead of writing a button in HTML, we can use ST button, and then this will return truthy uh, if we click on the button. And then in this case, we're going to set uh, a session state variable uh, called show fun, and this is arbitrary, something I decided. We're going to set that to true. And then we also have a case um, where this isn't in our session state already. Uh, if we haven't clicked the button, uh, then we're going to just default it to false. And then we have a case where we want to show the fun. Then we have our fun input is an SD text area. Again, no templates, no HTML in your Python. Then we can set the placeholder, type some nonsense. And then with Streamlit, we actually have a little bit different command to, to trigger it. And then we have kind of this same function, the same response. If we have any text input, we'll make a header, and then we'll print out uh, the reverse text. So we wanted to run this version. We can run streamlit run streamlit app.py. And then here on port 8501, we get our do something fun button. We can type some nonsense. And we get the same thing out. So I just wanted to kind of make this video as a quick comparison of, um, sorry, this isn't running because the bottle server's not running. Um, a quick comparison between these two methods. I've used both kind of even to the degree of printing a CSV into here or some copying in Excel, printing it into here, and then processing that and throw it in the machine learning model um, with bottle and then finding Streamlit. I mean, it's just so much easier. You could even do something like add a file uploader and ask it to rerun. And you automatically get something that you can drag and drop files into. Uh, your employees or your users can just kind of click through their folders and figure out what they need to submit. They don't have to go through running Python scripts or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this, and have a great day.